The Presidential Elections Committee has issued four certificates of eligibility on Thursday. Among the four successful presidential hopefuls was Tan Ji Se, who spoke to the media about the role of Singapore's elected president earlier in the afternoon.、Um, you spoke today about how the president should address, sorry, should address、uh, economic issues,、mm. um, and you spoke a lot about how you know all the different things that you hope that government would do.、Mm. Can you clarify when you say you want to urge the government and you would like the government to do all this? How would this take place? Would this take place in private discussions or public debates? Obviously, it will be in private、uh, discussions to start with,、um, and、um, and I'm sure the the government of the day, being open, being inclusive, will invite, will welcome views, views of a different nature. After all, it's all for the good of the country. No one, hold, no single person holds a monopoly of ideas, a monopoly of ideas. And I'm sure if the Prime Minister is true to his words, and he will accept, he has invited people in the National Day message for contrary views to come forward. And it is in that spirit that I, as President, will approach him too. And I'm sure he will treat me, the President. He will treat no no worse off than he will treat a normal citizen, and invite me to his.、Uh, To listen to my yeah, but、uh, should the government refuse? For example, some of the、yeah. some of the suggestions you have brought up today are quite controversial,、mm. such as you know disbanding Tamasic. You know that is something obviously, I mean, foreseeably the government will not do. So what if they refuse you? What will you do then? Well, I did use the word ultimately disbanding. Obviously, the influence of the involvement of Tamasic is very great in Singapore. Some I read reports that sixty percent, I have sixty percent of our economy of a three hundred. There was a report that. Read while I was doing research on this speech,、uh, which I did not use、uh, because there's no way of confirming the data. That 60 percent, this particular person, 60 percent of the economy of 300 billion is accounted for by GLCs and all that. I don't know how 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 did he get the figure, but obviously it's a big portion, and it will take more than five years to be able to divest. And、uh, obviously, ultimately to disband, but it will. I. To immediately disband, even within five years, can be disruptive to the economy. I wouldn't want that. But as a goal, as a long-term goal, ultimately all business enterprises should be undertaken by private sector, not by the government using the public purse. But the question is, what if the government decides to block or not listen to any of the suggestions? Then what will you do? Well, I think we will have to have a debate, you know, then、uh, on these matters. But they are in principle. In agreement with the private sector taking a greater role, so I they should put this into practice. They cannot say one thing. Private, you know, 1986, the Michael Fam Divestment Committee has said certain things, and what has it been done? What question, has been done? Yeah. The question is, if the government does not listen to any of your suggestions,、yeah. not just the, the Tamasic thing, but any of your suggestions,、yeah. you know, you have said before that if the government does not listen to you, then you will go public. So, would you go public on any of these suggestions? Well, we will see how serious is it. I don't. I don't think the government of the day would be so.、Uh, Unreasonable as not to listen to accept some of the views. I don't need them to accept 100% of my views.、Uh, they can go 50%, 60%. It's still a pass mark. Mr. Tan, you know how? Well, how do you think Singaporeans can accept such radical ideas? You know, like、uh, disbanding Tamasi, you know, and all that. Are, they, are we ready for such a radical change? You know, being looking at Singapore and being comfortable at why where they are now. And do you think that? Pursuing these ideas, if you get your CEO, it would be a detriment.、Uh, no, I don't think so. I think readers should just, and I hope the media doesn't unnecessarily highlight it. That when I use the word "disbanding," is ultimately you must see it in the light of the enterprise culture that we want to develop. And、uh, it will not happen overnight. It will not happen in five years. It may not even happen in ten years. But ultimately, we want to have a society of private businesses run by private people, not by Government officials using taxpayers' money—that's the fundamental point that I'm、uh, that I'm driving at. So when I say disbanding is ultimate disbanding, I don't see it happening in five or ten years. Beyond that, because the involvement, the influence of the GLC is too great to be disbanded overnight. And Mr. Tan, you also mentioned about you want to use your veto power, exercise your veto power to block key appointment holders. Can you elaborate on that? No, if yeah, my starting point is that. 
whoever comes into public office, who want to hold GLC, should not be motivated by money and money alone because a lot of them have been paid very well, several millions of dollars and bonuses and all that. You don't see this kind of money in given to public officials anywhere. If it is your own money, I mean, your own money, your own enterprise, I mean, you can, you can pay however much you like, but this, you are using, taking risks with taxpayers' money. So I want to make sure that the people who are running, let's say, public transport, uh, where the public interest, where you make money on the basis of commuters, part, members of the public, I want to make sure that they are not motivated by money. Obviously, we have to take care of their livelihood, their lifestyle, but should they should they be having an extravagant lifestyle millions based on million of dollar salaries at the expense of commuters? That's the question I want to ask. Do you think this would then set the stage for confrontation between No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think there's any comp- I think don't, I don't think we should read too much into that about confrontating. We are reasonable people uh, with reasonable views, but obviously there are limits uh, to what one can do. Um, I would expect a reasonable government, a reasonable people, not to pay themselves so much that it it that it confronts that it uh, confronts the the reasonableness of reasonable people. So yeah. Hi. Um, can I just ask, how do you feel your suggestions and what you plan to do as president? How do you think that can be co- accomplished within the constitution by? Which clause or which reading or interpretation do you feel you can accomplish all this? I think it is, if you are looking at clause, do you have a clause for unifying role of the president? Is there a clause for it? I don't think so. I don't think there's a clause for unifying role. But the government did say, though, the prime minister himself said that Dr. Tony Tan would be good for unifying the people. So... I would ask also, if throw back the question, that it, why is the clause? There is no clause. But that doesn't prevent the Prime Minister from saying that the President has a unifying role. And I think, the, I agree with the Prime Minister. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with him. Yes, the President has a unifying role. He is the head of state. He should unify. He should discharge the role of unifying the people, the nation, even though there's no clause in the Constitution. And when the law minister says you must go by the constitution, let him answer that. Where does the clause, where does the constitution say that there's a unifying role for the president? It's accepted. On the note of uh, Dr. Tony Tan, what do you think of his uh, latest statement that the, uh, the candidate should be running for an office that exists and not an off- office that they wish exists? Well, this is motherhood's statement. I hope, I wish Dr. Tony Tan could be more specific. He should tell us who he has in mind when he say, when he make that statement, who, in his view, which candidate among the other five of us has made that statement, and what did he say? All right? It's very good to hide behind motherhood statements, you know, but you must substantiate. Let's be open about it. Which candidate has said so? And what did he say? Did he, wh- and what did he imagine? What kind of role has he imagined for himself? That he should say. He should be more specific. Right? Anybody can make motherhood statements. So, Mr. Tan, what kind of role do you imagine for yourself? What role? The role, the unifying role, the role of engaging people, engaging government on issues of conscience. That's my role. You talk about all these big issues, but the thing is that you are not allowed to speak publicly about it based on the constitution, and you are only able to discuss with the cabinet you know, indoors. Yeah. Are you going to stick with that? Oh yes, my starting point is always to have private discussions with the government of the day. There is no intention to rock the boat. That's not the idea. Um, but I do have to tell the public members who have to exercise, who have to cast their votes, where my views stand. They have to know that they have to know that I will be taking these views into my private conversations with them, even though I may not air them in public. The voters must know that I have certain views. Otherwise, why should they decide to vote for me and not others? I have to say these views not because I want to confront the government of the day. Nothing of that sort. This agreement should not be interpreted as confrontation. We are all adults. We disagree. Even between husband and wife, there is disagreement. Is that confrontation? 
Is that confrontation? No, it's not. So Disagreement the, should not be seen as confrontation. So at the end of the day, you will...